out with the old and in with the new. Welcome uh, back, everybody. We recently removed all of the factory engine related gauges in our 1982 Cessna 172. So, I just came from the dentist and I'm really grateful that he wasn't using a 40 year old x-ray machine and dental tools to work on my teeth. And I'm glad he didn't say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's not what you want your dentist to say. It's surely what you don't want to hear from your cardiologist as he's analyzing your heart ticking with an EKG machine that looks more like a polygraph from the 1970s. So why is it in general aviation especially that it's relatively common to see vital aircraft instruments a half a century old? The date stamped on the back of these that I just removed says May of 1981. That's 42 years ago. How much longer could they have lasted? I don't know. So if they weren't working, why would I take them out? Why fix what isn't broken? Well, we can all make a good argument for not fixing what isn't broken. When it comes to airplanes, I wanna fix something before it breaks. Although these engine gauges were technically still doing their job, it's inevitable. They were destined to fail at some point. Even if you prefer the old school look and feel of analog gauges, modern digital equipment is bound to be more accurate and more reliable. As pilots and passengers, we want accuracy and reliability. So most likely you're not learning to fly in a brand new airplane with sophisticated electronics or even one manufactured in the last decade. And if you're lucky enough to be that person, that's awesome for you. But for most of us, we're flying around in airplanes that were built in the last great era of general aviation production, the 60s, 70s, and early 80s. In this era, engine gauges were mechanical in nature. The tachometer, it's driven by a fast spinning cable that extends from the engine all the way to the backside of this gauge right here. This oil pressure gauge, it had an old copper line running to the back of this instrument. Oil pressure was measured by a mechanical sensor that would drive this very delicate needle, all subject to the stress and vibration of 42 years of flying. So after removing all these, engine related gauges and their associated plumbing and electrical lines, what did we replace it with? We decided on the Electronics International CGR30. This company has been a leader in engine gauges for years and they offered several solutions. We chose this one because of its compact size, its ease of use and its affordability. All the previous gauge data plus much more fits into this one three and one eighths inch instrument panel hole on a very bright and easy to read screen. It also comes with the option of adding a second gauge if you want to display even more optional data at once. In addition to monitoring RPM, oil pressure, oil quantity, fuel quantity, and amps, our new engine monitor also displays battery voltage, the individual exhaust gas temperature, EGT, and cylinder head temperature, CHT, of each one of these cylinders, as well as fuel flow, outside air temperature, a digital clock, and a fuel burn computing feature. All of this data is being picked up by brand new sensors, brand new wiring and electronics. The only thing that I have yet to replace is the sending units in the fuel tanks themselves. But so far, I'm extremely impressed with the accuracy of all these features, especially the fuel calculations. The old fuel gauges, they would bounce around in turbulence and fluctuate five or 10 gallons at a time, but not this one. Its readings are rock steady and super accurate. All these functions are being recorded three times per second and all the data from the last 1,500 flights is being saved internally and can be downloaded onto a USB drive and viewed on a computer. An exceptional tool that owners and mechanics can use to monitor trends and predict engine performance. So as you can see, a lot of information can be organized into one central location with easy to read, bright, full color display. I chose a slightly different layout than the one shown here on their website, but basically the primary RPM and primary manifold pressure if you have a constant speed prop, go on the top. I have a fixed pitch prop, so manifold pressure would not help me that much. Oil pressure and oil temperature are required to be displayed at all times so that they would be on the primary screen. Since I currently only have one display, I also have the fuel quantity indications on the primary screen. The bottom left side of the gauge is a dedicated monitor for the EGT and CHT, and it can be displayed in multiple presentations. These indications, they give a much better indication of how each individual cylinder is doing and they assist in leaning the engine out much more precisely than how you used to have to do it without this information. On the second page I got fuel flow, volts, amps, 
and uh, on the left. And then on the right, I've got the air temperature both in Fahrenheit and Celsius along with a clock in Zulu time. So I don't have to do too much pilot math. The fuel management screen is basically a fuel totalizer that's tied in the GPS and it can tell me things like how much fuel I should have at the destination, how long I can fly on the fuel I have in hours and minutes, how much fuel I have burnt since I start up and since the last time I filled up, which none of these the old gauges would do. So as you can probably see, removing the 42 year old factory gauges and upgrading to this much newer technology drastically increases the reliability and the accuracy of the existing required information while also adding a whole new level of engine monitoring and analyzing for the pilot. Remember, new or old, these engine gauges can fail on you. Older equipment, especially equipment 40 to 50 years old, is much more prone to doing so. If you fly in a plane that's currently equipped with original gauges like I just removed, I certainly wouldn't panic and don't be overly worried about it. Just keep a close eye on them and back up the information that they're giving you the best way you can with other sources. Never completely trust your fuel gauges. Way too many pilots have run out of fuel by doing so. New or old, always take a manual reading with your dipstick to compare what your gauges are telling you. Know what to expect for fuel burn and keep close tabs on what you think it should be burning and what it is indicating. The more you fly, then the more you'll be in tune to the sounds that your engine are making when it's operating. Train your ear to know the difference between different ranges of RPM sounds. After flying for a little while, you should be able to tell by the sound if an engine's truly at 2400 RPMs, and certainly if it's idling at 1000. If something doesn't sound right, it probably isn't right, so get it checked out by a mechanic quick. All right, well, shout out to Electronics International for creating such great products that make flying safer and more reliable. And also to everybody over at Precision Aircraft Maintenance here in Denton, Texas, they help keep this bird flying. I'll put links to both of those places below if you want to know more about them. I hope this video helped you a little bit. Hit the like button if you did. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. See you next time.